Turn it in for the night. Yours truly, the counselor. Class time again with the counselor, Mr. James Torch. Uh, our subject this evening is domestic. It's called domestic frowns. Domestic. Let's say domestic smiles and domestic frowns, right? Domestic frowns and I mean smiles and domestic frowns. Um, I was just thinking back on some um, studies in class uh, assignments and some learning that I acquired at, um, at a time when I was in, in college. Uh, and this subject was on um, the frown and the smile. You know, they say when it comes to uh, a person frowning their face, they said it takes over a hundred muscles to actually flex and frown your face. You know, it takes a lot of flexing and energy to really just put that frown on your face. Uh, also, studies said that when you smile, you trigger a chemical reaction in your body and actually makes you feel good. How, how much, uh, how wonderful uh, the powers that one has within their body, you know, to change some things, to start working on some things, even in the midst of a depression, right? You can change some things if you do the right thing, right? So I also thought about uh, individuals incarcerated, right? Not all individuals, but many individuals that are incarcerated. You have individuals walking around. They have a prison system that most people that have never been to prison know nothing about. They have a racial line of things going on. They do not let uh, one race be uh, in a cell with another race. It's black and black, white and white, and uh, you know, if you some other race, they put you in the cell with someone of the same race, right? So what it does eventually, and what it's done through the years is eventually, uh, it causes you to be in a racist mind. You may have never been racist in your life. You may have had uh, a neighbor that was Caucasian, you may be black. But at the same time, once you get in that system, you cannot be friends with your neighbor anymore because of the racial line that they've created amongst the people. So if you are in that situation, if you find yourself in a situation and, and, and you're not frowning, I mean, you're frowning and, and stuff like that, why don't you try putting a smile on your face? Why don't you try changing the dynamics that are going on in your life? All right. That's it. Yours truly, the counselor, Mr. James Horton. Welcome back to the class with the counselor. Um, I want last class for you guys, and it's, um, I'm going to try to make it kind of brief. This topic is called, uh, it's called, it's too late. You know, it's too late. Um, we, um, have some issues that we're not aware of, many of us, to teach our children. We teach uh, our family members, our siblings. We say things uh, to them that's very painful, harmful, and damaging. Things like, uh, it's too late. You know, it's too late. There are some of us that's gone through troubling times, troubling times with substances, drugs, chemicals, syrup, pills, all kind of stuff. And, and it's just wrecked our lives. And when we get on what we'll call the get back or the get better, we seem to go with people and they say, hey, man, you messed up a lot of years, man. You're not going to be in, you know, you're not going to be able to get back. It's too late. 
You know, is this what we say? And I think that's the wrong thing to say. I want to share a story with a guy who was about, he was in his uh, middle, mid 60s or whatever, and um, he had went to change his life. He had went into a recovery process and he had met this young guy and, it, and he was really geared up and he was serious and he never looked back after that. And the man that shared this his story, he said when he came into this recovery process, he had talked to this young guy. The guy said, hey, Pops, don't you think it's kind of too late for you to be trying to get your life together now? He said, yeah, so let me tell you something. He said, the guy said, say what? He said, hey, he said, if you was working at a job and you was busting your behind or busting your ass for about two to three weeks and, and you've been waiting on this, uh, um, waiting to get your check and you keep going to the mailbox and you keep looking in the mailbox for your check and one day he said you go to the check I mean you go to the mailbox he said and you pull out an envelope and your check is there he said do you look at the check and say it's too late or do you say that motherfucker is right on time so that's it for the counselor yours too Mr. Dan Torres it's never too late